And just like that, once again, it's on What's Up World. It's your boy, Vic XL. This is the Ride and Dirty Show, the Ride and Dirty Podcast. We bring y'all what's next right now in hip-hop, R&B, and everyday life. If you are a mover and a shaker and you got a story to tell, then the Ride and Dirty Show is definitely a platform to get your story to the people. Got to say one time for our WRFG 89.3 FM, our... FM Radio Home. You can check us out every Tuesday night, Thursday morning, 3 a.m. Also, one time for Beat Break Radio FM, our internet radio home. You can check out the show every Wednesday night from 6 to 7. All right, again, this is your boy, Vic XL. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and that's Riding Dirty Radio, R-I-D-I-N-D-U-R-T-Y Radio. Make sure you check in, and if you want to see the latest in music videos, Make sure y'all hit us up on RidingDirtyRadio.com. All right, today is August the 1st, and you know we always, always got to check in and um, give you the birthdays of the people who are definitely having birthdays and celebrating on the days we broadcast. So I got to start the show off by saying happy birthday to one of my favorite rappers of all times, my man Chuck D of the legendary group Public Enemy. Got to say happy birthday to Chuck D. Chuck turns 58 years old today. 58 years old, man. Happy birthday, Chuck D. The rhythm, the pose, the rebel. One time, my man, Chuck D, man. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Got to say happy birthday to actor Elijah Kelly. Elijah Kelly, um, if, you, if you're familiar with the movie Red Tails, uh, Hairspray, Elijah Kelly, he's in that. He turns 32 years old today. Got to say happy birthday to you, sir. Um, Got to say happy birthday to the daughter of Master P, Miss Symphonique Miller. She's a singer slash rapper. Got to say happy birthday to her. She turns 22 years old today. So definitely happy birthday to you, mama. Uh, Got to say happy birthday to L.A. rapper Coolio. Coolio turns 55 years old today. Um, I didn't, you know, I never really even thought about how old Coolio was. I didn't think he was 55, but hell, I ain't have no clue how old he was. But happy birthday to Coolio, turning the big 5-5 five five today. I also got to say happy birthday to NBA guard, formerly of the LA Clippers. He just got traded. The son of Mr. Doc Rivers. Got to say happy birthday to Austin Rivers. He turns 26 years old today. And last but not least, on my celebrity on my celebrity birthday list, I got to say happy birthday to um, the manager of Eminem, founder, co-founder of Shady Records. I got to say happy birthday to Mr. Paul Rosenberg. Paul Rosenberg turns 47 years old today. Paul has definitely been doing his thing for years. Definitely been holding down Eminem. Definitely been holding down Shady Records. And um, Paul is definitely, definitely a major player in the music game. So I got to say happy birthday to him. Now, real quick, on to my my Facebook family, friends, and Facebook celebrities. I got to say happy birthday to first and foremost, the mayor of my hometown, Griffin, Georgia. Happy birthday to Mr. Rodney McCord. Happy birthday, sir. I also got to say happy birthday to one of my favorite female MCs representing Macon, Georgia, representing the ATL. Got to say happy birthday to Miss Marley Blue. Uh, she's a brand new mom, um, but definitely, definitely, definitely happy birthday to her. And last but not least, I got to say happy birthday to one of the dopest performers representing South Carolina by way, actually representing Atlanta by way of South Carolina. Got to say happy birthday to my man. And if you've ever had a chance to see him on that stage, he kills it. Happy birthday to my man, Mr. Malachi. Malachi Curtis Boyd. Definitely got to say happy birthday to him. Man, Malachi destroys the stage when he's on stage. So happy birthday to my man, Malachi. Happy birthday to the mayor, Mr. Rodney McCoy. And also happy birthday to my girl, Miss Marley Blue. So hopefully all these people are enjoying their day, their Leos, just as I am a Leo. Um, but happy birthday to them. And it's Leo season. And there's no greater season than Leo season. So good people, good friends. Happy birthday to y'all. Have a blessed 
joyous and healthy day. All right, real quick, um, you know the show brought that you're listening to right now is brought to you by the good people over at Dr. Juice Cleanse. That's right, Dr. Juice Cleanse is an all-natural cleanser, all-natural cleanser that does all kind of amazing and good things for your body, like help slow down the aging process. And, you know, we're talking about birthdays, and a lot of us don't want to look as old as we are. A lot of us tend to have wrinkles, and but you know what? If you get on Dr. Juice Cleanse, Dr. Juice Cleanse can help eliminate all that. Because like I said, it slows down the aging process. It also helps eliminate stress. If you have a stressful life, uh, if you tend to surround yourself with stress, well, you know what? Drinking a daily dose of Dr. Juice Cleanse can help, you know, calm that stress down. It can eliminate the people, but it can help calm the stress down. Also, Dr. Juice Cleanse can help you lose up to... 25 pounds in 10 days. Now you tell me, who don't want to lose 25 pounds in 10 days? Dr. Juice Cleanse can help you. And it also helps provide a balanced pH system. But you know what? I can sit here and talk to you all day about how and what Dr. Juice Cleanse can do for you. But you know what? I want you to visit drjuicecleanse.com and find out about this awesome product for yourself and become a drinker and a loyal user of Dr. Juice Cleanse, our good sponsor. And hey, tell them Vic XL and the Ryan Dirty Show sent you, and um, they definitely, definitely, definitely might have that good, good hookup for you. All right, again, today is Wednesday, August the 1st. It's Leo season, and today's show is no different than any other show. You know on the Ryan Dirty Show, we bring you what's good. We got those great stories to tell by the people out here changing our culture. And today is no different than any other day because on the line I have reggae artist Mr. Dilgan. How you doing today, sir? Yes, yes, man. I'm doing blessed. I'm blessed. I live to see this day, you know. Blessed, blessed bless to see this day and give thanks for the blessing, give thanks for life because without life then there's nothing at all. You see what I'm saying? So I'm feeling good to wake up to see this day because many do not. You see what I'm saying? So I'm blessed. All right. The first thing I got to ask is it Dilgen or Dilgen? Dilgen. It's Jin. D I L L G I N. So it's Dilgen. All right, Mr. Dilgen is on the line. So let's start this thing off. And I'm 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 always about the artists telling their stories and letting the people know about themselves. So let the people know right off the bat. Well, where is Dilgen from? Well, I was born and raised in Jamaica, and um, actually in Jamaica now, but um, sometimes I'm in the United States of America, so um, I'm both there and here. And Dilgin in Jamaica right now, speaking with you right now in Jamaica. Okay, what made Dilgin? Dilgin, yeah. What made you? What made you want to pursue music? Because you're you're a singer, you're a songwriter, you're a DJ. What made you want to pursue music? Well, music is a is a is a is a lifetime work. Okay? That's why it said, you know, music shall live and never die. And it's a spiritual thing as an inborn concept that does grow up and come up inside of us. And you know, as a regular music and as a I do every genre of music with where it come I can do. But um, you know, reggae is our heartbeat because it's a spiritual music. And I do the music because the love of the music. I do the regular music. I do the music just for the the people. When you can make people feel happy in themselves. Then that would be a great thing to do, you know. So I love the music and I want to do the music like that to let the people and we just happy and have a very nice time that every time they listen to music, you know, they have a joy within themselves. All right. Who are some of your influences that um made you want to pursue music? Well, I'm great of my influence and all the time I say Ernest Jimmy, Jimmy Cliff, Bob Marley and all of the music them that but more influence like Ernie Simmons, you know, he's a very storyteller when he when he writes his song. You can just look in like you can every time you write a song, like you can see the whole story, you know what I mean, like you do in a movie. Uh, so I always admire Ernie Simmons, you know. All right. Um, do you remember at an early at what early age you want to do music and then at what age did you realize that you know what, I'm pretty good at what I do and I want to pursue this for the rest of my life? Well, uh, 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 at the earlier age, you know, like about 10, and then now, uh, like when you get about 15, then, you know, when the people them say, yeah, you can do this, you know, 
you know, so growing up like about 18 years, you know, you know, you're going to take it down professionally. So, but they take it down professionally about 1920. And just, but when I was in my 20, and then just start to do it from there professionally. All right. Um, what's it like growing up in Jamaica? Because, you know, I hear some amazing, beautiful stories about Jamaica, but I also hear some rough, rugged and raw stories about Jamaica. So from your perspective, Mr. Dilgen, what what's it, what was it like for you coming up? Well, for me coming up, you know, it, it, it's very hard, you know, but what I'm saying, you know, it would be, is I would say very hard growing up in Jamaica and I'm doing my thing, but Jamaica is paradise, like, to me, it's like heaven and earth, you know, because it teach you to accept life for what it is, you know what I mean? It teach you to, um, to, to, Everything that fears you and all that struggle that come to you, you can you can face it because you come from a place where they would say dog is dog, but at the same time it is a blessed place because it taught you a lot of things as well as the experience teaches you wisdom. So whatever you learn growing up, then that live with you and don't depart from you. So you make you stronger. That when I come into America, because everywhere can have it good and bad. You know, everywhere have the people dying everywhere in the whole world have a good part about it and you have a bad part about it because the negative and positive build up the earth, you see what I'm saying? So growing up in Jamaica is like is like uh, the best thing for me because it made me grow up and can stand up to any test that comes in front of me to face it. I can face it with, with a joy and know to deal with it. Okay. Um now we I spoke of you being a singer, songwriter, DJ, but you're also uh, a very accomplished producer. You've had a chance to produce for Capleton, Beanie Man, um, Sizzler. Um, man, what's it like to produce for such great artists? And what did you learn working with these artists? Well, well it's just, as you say again, it's a joy and it's a family thing. And, and you come up and it was feeling good doing work with all of these artists, knowing all of these artists, because we was all in the street together, you know? We all growing up in the street together. We all seen Capitan from him grow up still straight and now in the music, you know. So it is a joy to know that you could have them in the studio working and a rhythm that you um a rhythm that you have and they come and sing some songs and it and it was a good thing. Very, very, very um very important to know that I could work with these artists and feel good in myself, you know, that yeah, I put out these songs for these artists too, just as myself, you know. So it feels very good. All right. Now, having the rapport of working with this type of artist, um, how has it been for you, you know, cause transitioning from artist to producer and producer to artist? What's that transition like? And when labels or when people hear your music, do you think the expectation knowing your track record as a producer is extremely high? Or do you feel like there's a standard you have to meet? Like, what what's it like going from producer to artist, artist to producer? Well, as as I said, you know, from a from my entering the business at a younger age, I always have an independent so to um do it and myself don't really have anyone to um to um to 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 do it for me. Uh, so I always try to um be independent in the business because uh, because when it comes to a part of the producing. And then as an artist, because I was an artist before I even turned producer. But when I when I was trying to um record in my song, you know the um other producer would hardly want you to come and record. It, it was a task to get in touch to find a find a producer to produce you. I, a producer again to see you to um to um let you come and record with them. So it's very hard back then, you know, very, very hard to even go into the studio. So now I have to say, all right then. I have to turn a producer then and produce my own thing and buy my studio time, pay for my studio time, you know, buy my rhythm, get everything I want and go in there like that and then vice myself and then vice other artists and then let's take it from there. You see what I'm saying? So that's why it's not really hard for, for producing and for doing the music because it was all about singing the music, right, writing the music and doing the music first. So when it comes to producing now, then you got to just all right, say, this is what you got to do. Come over here and go over there. So you got to just be versatile, you know? Okay. Um, is it hard to find producers to match your sound or to find producers that can bring the, the diligent sound to life? No, it's not too hard to find producers who can do that because, you know, 
if a real producer from the New York Vice, they know if you can do the thing, and, and sometimes you had a vice to do the thing, and then some producer here and there sound in you what you don't have. So even till now, I work with other producers, said we, so you see what I'm saying? Even though I am a producer, I work with other producer at the same time too. Yeah, because sometimes someone would have a sound and hear something within you or in what you're doing, and they can give you that ideas and then you can say, okay, you don't say that sound good, so let me try it and do it. So that's why we're an open producer. We listen to other producer as we say, other producer listen to me as just like the songwriting. You listen to other person's songwriting, you listen to your own and then everybody combine and work it and you know. Because it's a team. It's a, no matter how you take it, it's a team, man. You've got to work with everyone, you know what I mean? All right, definitely, definitely agreed. I definitely agree. Um, you are also, man, you've been all across the world touring. What do you enjoy most about the business? The touring aspect and being on that stage or the recording aspect, aspect being in that studio? And touring and being on stage and see the people in full joy the whole moment and you yourself full joy the whole moment of what's going on at that time. So it touring is very feel nice. So I enjoy the touring and, and um you know, you 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 you're still getting a lot of experience, you still learning a lot of different things. It help you to focus more, it help you to even write better, it help you to even do your music better, you know what I mean? So I, I enjoy the touring a lot. All right. Um, what's a dil what's a dil Dilgen show like? If I Dilgen. come if I come to see a Dilgen show, what can I expect? Well, you can expect everything. You can expect the the vibes, the 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 the, 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 the education of the music, the teaching of the lyrics, and you know, to make to make the people understand what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say. And you're gonna expect nothing but the best from Dilgen because I always try to do my best. And when I'm at, when I'm on the stage, man, when I'm on the stage, man, it's like you know, it's like a fire, you know, it's like it's like everything turned upside down, you know, like I'm a beast right there. All right, how do the ladies respond to Miss Dil Mr. Dilgen when you're on stage? How do the ladies react? So you, well, the ladies them just are crazy and just rejoicing and just screaming and. And um, just enjoying the whole moment and loving it. Sometimes I perform on certain show, it's like they can't get enough, you know, because I was just in Europe and it's like it was crazy, you know. All right. So okay. the ladies, them are always screaming. You know, then I have tune for the ladies to let they, you know, All right. let they scream. Definitely, definitely, definitely. When people <laughs> listen, when people listen to your music, what do you want them to take from it? Well, um, that is a that is a very very good point. When 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 a person take my songs, I uh, go on the YouTube or the, the Facebook, the um, the iTunes, Spotify, listen to the song carefully, listen to the words, listen to the lyrics, listen to the meaning of the song and where I'm trying to go, the the things that I'm trying to say to uplift the mind of the people, because that's what I always try to do to do songs that people don't do. A five year old kid from them can listen, they could listen to the song and understand and pick something from it. So I always try to do the lyrics that to uplift the mind. So people have to expect that. That's what I want to do for the people. When I give them my songs, they can listen to my music, they can they can learn something from it, they can do anything happen. If they have a sad moment, they can listen to what one of my songs could take them out of that so sad moment, put them into this happy moment, you know? So that's what about my music and that's what I want to do and that's what I'm still doing and that's what I'm doing. Okay. And not only are you a renaissance man of music, being singer, songwriter, producer, artist, but you also have your own record label. Let the people know the name of your record label and um, who are some of the other people on your record label? Well, um, my, my record label name, Wall Street Record and the, um, the street spelled with a Z. And, um, I produce Capleton, Sizzler, Jad, Nooks, and it. I produce a lot of name artists and it, and it, and Capleton, Sizzler. And if they go on the, um, I mean, if they go on, um, iTunes and that the album out there and then anything that they put up with Dilgen, then everything gonna come up so they could see all of the whole catalog and all things that there, you know, cause you know the internet doing a good job now. So, you know, if someone do want to find out something about you, they can go there and find it out and thing. But I produce a lot of artists, I would say, being a man, Capitan, Sizzler, Luciana, Jard Nooks, Half Pint, you know, Mighty Diamonds, 
And a lot of other young artists too. So I'm saying to you, okay, there's a lot of other artists that even make it on the international scene. All right. Now, you mentioned the internet. Tell me how how important has the internet been to the career of Mr. Diligent? Yes, it's very important because it go to a wide scale because back then when there is no computer, you don't know, it's just like a hand and the mail. So the internet is very is very a tool, is a marketing tool, marketing marketing tool to um to 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 achieve more and let go to a wider scale of people that people can listen to you. Cause you can do a music today, you put it on the radio today and a million people hear it. Time gone that couldn't happen. So the internet is doing a very good job. You see what I'm saying? Time gone we couldn't do even an interview like what I'm doing now with you on this radio station because it was hard to do. Very hard to do. So the, the internet is very, very, very important and do a lot of good job. And it, you know, because it's good and bad in, in it, some people use it for the bad, some people use it to do the good thing. So it is very good. The internet is doing a good job. All right. Um, via the internet, have you ever stumbled across a fan of your work and thought, man, I had no clue they had even heard of me in the area? And if so, where is that yes, fan from? That's fun. <laughs> A lot of time, a lot of time. I was in Europe and someone walked up on me and said, man, you saved my life. You know, and, and it's a feeling when, when a man walk up to you what you don't know in a different year. And a man said, yeah, I was listening to you. I was listening to your album, man. And a song, a song and it was just uplift me. I was going through a depression and that song turned my life around. So now you, 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 that gives you that feeling within yourself. You now say, oh, I got to do the good work and I got to do something good. So I found a, a lot of news, you know. Some of them, yeah, I mean, you're not going to have everybody saying good thing about you. Some going to say things, but I go up in a lot, so you got to make the beat, mix the bitter with the sweet. So I have a lot of people saying a lot of good things on the internet. And, you know, I found a lot of amazing, amazing things. All right. All right. So what's next for Mr. Diligent? Yeah, well, what next? In um, for the, the, I have a new EP coming out, and um, right now I'm in Jamaica. I'm in the studio making some reading, making some beat right now, and um, I'm just working. And I have the tent, the tent this month. I have a show in um, in um, they call it in Portmore, in Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica, over by Portmore, and I have a lot of things in store for me right now coming up. What we're working on, and um. We just continue to do the work, so to expect the best of Diljin coming out at all time. Diljin still working, still working, you know? All right. And you recently just dropped the video. Uh, let the people know the name of that video and the concept of it. Can you come again? All right. I just recently checked out a video by you on YouTube. Um, let the people know, like, how fun was it filming the video? Like, in the video I seen, like, you're kind of walking around. It it has a very positive message. Um, How do you feel about filming videos? Well, I'm feeling good about filming the video. Children, somehow or another, we just got a bad connection. Everything's been fine, but now we have a bad connection. I, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. All right, we got a bad connection for a little bit there. Tell me a little bit about the video again. Yeah, man, I'm saying the video, the, the video um, for, for Stiller Work is, um, I just do that video so the, um, the story of the lyrics to make the people and know have a better understanding of the song. So sometimes you're on a job, you're doing something, someone trying to stop your gear, you know, but no matter what, you focus on the price of doing what you're doing. So the videos come about all of that and doing the video, it was just, it was just so, it was just so enjoyable doing the video at that time. So the video was right. The video was the video was on the people and doing the video with the people and shooting the video with all of these people it was amazing. So it was amazing to on the camera to do the video to tell the whole story of the songs that I'm doing. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. 
Gotcha. All right. Last thing I want to do, I got to put you on the spot. I have a listener, yeah. and, and today is her birthday. And she loves reggae, dance hall, reggae tone. She loves that Jamaican accent. Her name, <laughs> her yeah. name, she goes by the name of Extra. Can I do you, a, can Extra. you do me, yes, can you do me a favor and just sing her happy birthday? She's listening to the show right now and she would, man, she's probably going to bump her head while she's at work. Yeah, <laughs> well, go like this, Extra. Have a birthday to you. Have a birthday to you. Ninety second. Happy birthday, extra. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, extra. Long life and prosperity. Give thanks again for the blessing. Yeah, count it all joy and more blessing. All right, thank you, sir. Do me one quick favor before we let you go. Let the people know how to find you on social media. Yes, man, I say you can find Diljin on social media. You can find Diljin Tony Bay and Facebook, Diljin One and Twitter, and Diljin on Instagram. And if you Google Diljin, D I L L G I N, and Google, then everything can come up with Diljin right there. You see what I'm saying? And I want to say big up all, 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 big up the Empress, big up Empress Rose, continue all of his blessing. Big up the I and I self for your blessing, see you, man. Give thanks for the blessing. Give thanks for having me here doing this interview today. So I want to say more blessing. Give thanks for the strength. Thank you, sir. And we're going to drop that record by you. Appreciate you checking in. Yes, sir. Give thanks. Bless it. To the ball of the sugar for the time for no evil. Hey, second. One man a fight for me still a work. Me still a work. Me still a work. One man a fight for me still a work. Me still a work. Me still a work. Look where you go and do me in a little Jamaica. Them a walk with me name from parchment paper. Them a fight against me cause me a make me pay. We still have work. We still have work. We still have work.
but nine and five foot, we still have work. We still have work. We still have work. But nine and five foot, we still have work. We still have work. One time for my man, Diligent, Diligent, all right? It's your boy, Vic XL, Ryan Dirty Radio, Ryan Dirty Podcast. We'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. with another exciting guest. Till then, we gone. Love each other and live well. Peace.